and uh, going to the next one okay the similar one till now we had seen the sensor side the actuator set i was trying to mention like right like in the from the beginning brakes and all so here also not only brakes there are plenty of other actuators like intake air throttle so air throttle portion sensor i tried to explain right like uh, some kind of amount of own gas only they are trying to uh, take inside so that's where this throttle uses so throttle just moves from 0 to 100% position so if it rotates some 20% position so remaining 80% will be free and 80% gas will come inside so if it is a half block 50% then 50% amount of gas will come into the picture so it's like a uh, basically it's an actuator and uh, intake air compressor compressor actually rotates round 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 and fast and it will just compress the air so that's the reason the intake air compressor is there charge air cooler and intake valve pressure control valve these are all everything is like a valves are like a simple solenoid valves you can you guys know solenoid valves right it it has like a uh, move front or back uh, only linear motion is allowed so kind of a similar way um, some kind of feeder valves are rotational basis and exhaust valve and camshaft and crankshaft uh, these are also there and turbo and injectors so you have seen some kind of a piston is going up and down in the engine graph right that's what the injectors are talking about so everything is an actuator so everything is an actuator and you are able to control over the ecu so every sensor input will be fed to the ecu every actuator will be connected to the ecu everything is controlled with respect to the ecu and uh, going to the further i see engines what are the different things are there so we are talking about the regulations of bs4 and bs6 right so why exactly this bs4 and bs6 into the come into the picture so previously previously let us say some 40 years back there are no regulations why there are no regulations nobody bothers about environment pollution there so now exactly why they are bothering about it because it exactly impacting the ozone layer and many of the greenhouse gases which are many plenty harmful gases are there which are exactly impacting our human human health also so they came up with this regulations in every other country in the earth so not only the india it's in us in it's in germany it's in europe everywhere in australia everywhere it is there so uh, how exactly these guys are controlling this exhaust gas into the non harmful gases so uh, obviously after burning there are very much harmful gases you as i mentioned at the starting there is a particular filter to filter the smallest particles which are called as soot particles not only soot there is nitrogen monoxide it's a quite harmful gas which is the one of the dangerous gas no uh, which is getting released after the burning of the fuel and uh, no is a quite a little okay compared to no so these are called as a nox uh, nox uh, exhaust gases and sox also is there sulfates also there so2 so3 everything is there so all sox is also there and uh, you will be having other gases like a carbon dioxide as an outcome okay so and water surprisingly water is also an outcome of our engine exhaust so if it is a pert if it is a happily burnt it's a 100% working as expected you should be able to see water outside of the vehicle from the exhaust pipe so uh, but it's not like a 100% uh, combustion is successful or as as much as we want and the chemical reactions are not as much as we want that's the reason we are not completely getting water as an out product we are getting mix of this water and other stuff so here we will be seeing what are the different gases how exactly they are going to uh, exactly control over the harmful gases into the normal gases to the environment so here you are able to see a cooling system which is the diesel engine you can able to see right and uh, the very next to diesel engine you will be able to see a diesel particular filter dpf so what this guy is doing i already mentioned this particular filter it will just extract the smallest particles black uh, smallest particles from the exhaust gas 
so it will just accumulate all the exhaust gas particles in this particular portion so in this cylinder and it will just release only gas outside of this and what will happen after that the exhaust gas will come into the picture and there is a unit called diesel exhaust fuel tank okay what is this guy is doing here what is def so we know gasoline is a fuel and diesel as a fuel what exactly def diesel exhaust fluid what it is so are we filling any def fuel yes people are filling def fuel in premium vehicles and trucks and buses you will not be able to see in the moderate range of cars but you will be able to see in the high very high end range of cars and uh, very mostly you will be able to see in the trucks buses these are all the main uses for this def and this def exhaust fluid what exactly this thing this is a secondary resource of fuel no this is not a secondary resource it's not like a hybrid engine it is only used for mixing some kind of a urea inside the exhaust gas so urea you know and it's three everybody knows urea uh, so this is like a urea like a light amount of this of urea fuel fluid will be there people call it as like a add blue okay add blue they will be calling and add blue will be filled in the in these tanks what will happen when the exhaust gas comes some amount of uh, add blue will be injected towards the exhaust side you will be able to see def doser right so there is the place the some kind of a add blue will be injected into this portion and uh, what will happen this will get mixed with the exhaust air and your exhaust will be having a dangerous nitrogen oxygen components will, which will get mixed with this that is a no you call just simply for guessing just call it as a nitrogen monoxide is getting released of exhaust and no is the name nitrogen monoxide and nh3 is for urea both no and nh3 so two ends are there right so coming out of after the chemical reaction it will just come out of n2 plus the other sub component will come so in quite compared to no n2 is a very better gas you know you, people now feeling with the tires right uh, previously people fill with the normal gas but now nitrogen Uh, so it's a not a harmful gas basically it is a not very harmful gas nitrogen monoxide yes very much yes and uh, nitrogen dioxide is not that much it's also yes so basically n plus n this combination is getting it uh, added and uh, getting n2 as a by product and uh, you will be so here you are getting eliminating your harmful nitrogen monoxide so after this uh, mixing it will go to ser catalyst so selective control okay what exactly selective control means nothing but these gases only that complete operation whatever it happens will be happening in the ser only and uh, output of this ser catalyst what uh, is nothing but nitrogen plus water to the environment as i mentioned water also a very much uh, component to be expected out of the exhaust pipe but nobody knows that uh, exhaust from exhaust pipe water comes but it's actually practical and it should come it is not coming and nitrogen is not a harmful gas anymore because nitrogen monoxide yes so this is how the uh, system exactly working the sensors and actuators in the ic engine i tried to explain the most portion of it and uh, below is the, the left side you can able to find some kind of a information which i gave through the session you what are the different components dock dpf ser urea tank temperature and pressure sensors so these are all components which are involved in this exhaust gas treatment uh, from the harmful gases to non harmful gases okay going to the next slide and the introduction about the vehicular networks yeah i'll give a very brief introduction about uh, at the beginning itself so to communicate okay you are sending a signal uh, there is an ecu let us say you are trying to rotate your uh, steering from 10% you rotated but it has to convert from 10% to 90% right so how who is getting converted ecu i mentioned ecu will convert so how exactly this communication of you are just uh, turning 10% of steering 
which will be recorded using the position sensor. Let us say position sensor is there. Okay, you recorded 10% of change here and 90% should come outside. So how exactly this 10% of change is being sent to ECU? So how exactly this communication is happening from the steering column to the ECU? Is the CAM, LING, flex ray, most, these are all like a vehicular network. So how exactly, so you guys know, uh, as you are see I2C, I2C communication, you do very well know, right? This does like a protocol, how exactly it needs to communicate, right? So quite a similar way, CAN, LING and other stuff for a very similar way. It's a communication protocol, how exactly one node to another node, it has to communicate. You will be able to know in I2C master and slaves, right? Sim very, sim very similar fashion, master and slaves here also will be there. And so that is how this uh, can lin and the flux ray others and came to the picture. And uh, I can mention can is the most, most, most used in the automotive. So people require the skill of can and uh, without can, there is no vehicle. If you see any vehicle can is there everywhere in bus, in car, in truck, everywhere it is there. Can is the highest used technology protocol in the vehicles um, in the for communicating between the one node to another node, like a master to slave. So this is a small intro about the vehicular networks. And uh, I just mentioned a small examples like a ABS CCU to ADAS CCU. Uh, I will brief about ADAS much later in the slides and uh, how vehicle speed is getting displayed over the dashboard where the origin is a vehicle speed sensor right so vehicle speed sensor is placed at the almost near to the tire side uh, tire side now how exactly your vehicle speed is getting displayed at the dashboard right so how it is like uh, which line is communicating who is showing you the value how exactly you are getting displayed is nothing but with the communication protocols. So CAN, CAN FD and other stuff, everything. And how does remotely unlocking car works? Yeah, IR, right? Like with the unlocking key, you're directly unlocking your vehicle door, right? So this is also one kind of protocol. There are plenty of examples like this, you know, like uh, others, you know, when you turn on the light, it just turns on, how exactly it is turning on? It's not a simple electric circuit. You are just giving the information to ECU and ECU should turn the light, tell, tell the light to, okay, just turn on. That's how uh, it actually works. So this is the quite a um, introduction about the vehicular networks. So I just tried to mention here, CAN, CAN FD, LIN, FlexRay, MOST and other stuff are the communication protocols here. And uh, okay, as I mentioned, CAN is the quite interesting protocol because every other uh, vehicle is using this technology. Okay, let's know about this CAN a little interaction about it. So initially introduced by 1986. So CAN was coined by Bosch. So most of the people knows about the Bosch company. It is like, a, it is not only in the automotive sector, it's everywhere, it's a home appliances and uh, other way around it's in electrical, everywhere it's in medical, everywhere it is there, uh, not only in the automotive side. So in automotive side also it is present and they declared or they invented the scan protocol, nobody else. And uh, they invented and every other uh, manufacturers, every other suppliers are using the same CAN protocol to use as a intravehicular communication. Okay. And um, the speed is like a one MB per second is the maximum. Faster, safer and reliable. Yes, uh, we can talk about the CAN in the further slides. So what exactly this CAN is doing? ECU to ECU, it just communicates by transmitting messages from one, uh, one, one, one ECU to the other ECUs. And, and the other one is like, a, there is no way to transmit messages only to a specific issue. Okay, uh, let me explain how this protocol exactly working. Okay, and uh, so how exactly this guy is working? Okay, one issue to another. So here you can see in the middle picture, right? Can low, can high, and issue one, issue two, issue three. So what exactly these guys are doing? So ECU one is nothing but let us assume there is an engine ECU. ECU two is a brake ECU. Let us say. 
okay and uh, what exactly will happen let us say you were some messages from break so break messages will be sent over the can channels so it will be uh, delivered to the every other ecu which is converted connected to the network that means if you send any messages then ecu1 also receives ecu2 also receives ecu3 also receives but ecu2 only accept the messages and process it why exactly the ecu2 only is accepting break is more relevant for the break ecu right so it is relevant for the break ecu so which are all uh, it's a quite a relevant or uh, for that particular message then only that ecu will receive other ecus also will receive it but it will never accept it and it will never process it so that is how it is like a one transmission but multiple broadcasting so every other node in the network will be receiving the messages of every other message it will receive but what it wants it will just accept it so that is how uh, this can communication is working now so and coming to the standard frame of the can uh, you can able to see uh, the standard frame of the can here in the bit uh, so basically it's a combination of a different uh, type of data so first thing is like a startup frame we call it as a recessive bit there one and uh, id standard identifier so what exactly how exactly ecu2 is accepting while ecu3 is not accepting while ecu1 is doubted whether it has to accepted or not so how exactly these guys are getting decided so every message will be having an identifier of a 11 bit identifier so uh, based on this identifier this ecu recognizes okay this message is fits for me and this message i need to take it and process and it will also decide like it is not fit for me and it should not process so this identifier is like a name to us okay and name just if it fits or not fits simply so to identify it and rtr control is a quite a simple bit so there is a difference between a standard frame and a uh, extended frame where exactly this bit is getting used and um, data frame okay this is the interesting guy okay you are sending a message okay you you are sending some 10% of fact pedal i pressed it or 10% of break i have applied so where this 10% is getting conveyed okay you are naming your message with identifier but how exactly this message data is getting communicated so here this is the um, frame uh this is the data where exactly the data fits in like 10% 20% 30% how whatever the data you want to send will be there in this place and the crc okay this guy is a little interesting guy uh sackly credentialy check people call it as okay you are interest you are sending some information via electrical wires how you know that you have sent 10% and uh, uh, you are receiving receiving 11% as an information how you can assure that okay whatever the data you sent is 10% only how the receiver knows that okay this guy sent to, to me only 10% it's not 11% this guy can tell about that so what if will the crc is doing what this way a simple algorithm i will explain like let us say it will just add all the bytes all the bits in the C, uh, data field and other frames identifier and other frames data field let's say some data field okay just add it some over it let us say i got 7 when i am transmitting with 10% of a uh, break pedal Seven is my count. Okay, once after receiving it by ECU two, and uh, it just calculate. It will just sum up the data. However, uh, how it is exactly calculated the transmitting side. So transmitting side, it, you will you have just added and gave the count of seven, right? Seven will be sent over here, and it will also what it will do. It will also sum up the data and see at the receiver side whether my seven uh, the sum is equal to the CRC or not. so if both are equal okay this guy whatever he sent i just realized it correctly if it is not correct i could have got different count not the 7 maybe i got 8 so that is how they are just reverifying that okay that's the reason they verifying that okay the message transmitted is proper and i have received is correct and acknowledgement okay this guy is also is something like there are two types of things are there positive acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement 
so the transmitter transmits the message to you and you received it and you processed it and you do whatever the job you want to do done but how the transmitter knows that okay you transmitted correctly to the ec and it received it so there should be an acknowledgement right like either it is a positive acknowledgement that means i have received it properly yes if it is a not received then uh, okay i have not received there's a negative acknowledgement so the re receiver should send an acknowledgement is a positive acknowledgement or a negative acknowledgement and end of frame it's like a stuff bits will be added into the message frame um so like a very small introduction i tried to give to know about can it takes minimum 3 to 4 hours of session uh, to talk about the each and individual sessions and how exactly this master slave communication or multicasting is working in the vehicles so that is how um it's a kind of a big lecture um this is the smallest intro for it and standard frame and extended frame i tried to explain here so standard is nothing but the 11 bit fair let me say uh, all 11 bits are used for identifying your uh, the message 29 bits is like much bigger than 11 right so you can actually name uh, plenty of others you have 11 factorial combination here you have 29 factorial combination here right so it's like a more number of messages if you require then go for it 29 bit identifier so people uses 29 bit identifier in trucks basically it requires plenty of ecu so people call it as a 29 bit identifier so people are going for extended frame uh, in trucks standard frame in cars okay little um, introduction about uh, the can only here you can able to see the first picture uh, under arbitration text um so you are able to see uh, the bus signal right so bus is nothing but uh, the electrical wires which is there can high can low in the previous slide um you are able to see the orange line and the uh, blue line right so they are nothing but this can lines and uh, they are there only your electrical signal will be transformed so since you are electronics you know about ptl right ptl logics so more than 2.5 volts i just consider as a positive and one bit if it is less than 2.5 volt okay consider it less than 0 volts so zero bit so it's just a voltage division if it is a more than 2.5 just declare it as one volt one uh, like a boolean one and if it is a less than 2.5 volt received then boolean zero so that is how exactly is passing through the electrical signals it will just communicate so here you can able to see right so bus so initially it just went down and went up so constantly down for some time constantly up for some time and constantly down and uh, up for recess of it so here uh, so there are 1 2 3 below are there right so let us say there are different messages there there are, there are three messages which are transmitted in the bus so all the three messages received at the receiver node but which message it has to take first all are transmitted at the same time more or less it is not possible but let us say all the messages are transmitted at the same time but which message i need to accept first so how it has ecu has to know okay i have to accept first one message only not two three messages okay first one message there after third message or second message how it actually knows so this is the arbitration can in can where you will get to know which message you need to first process it so here you can able to see um, so here also at one let us consider um, before going to this you have to know about two bits zero as a dominant one as a recessive i try to mention in the left side dominant means it is a zero and the recessive means it is a one so who have the dominant at the last will be having the highest priority so that is what the can says okay okay who we will see who is having who is holding their dominant bit at last okay let us see uh, after first message 1 2 3 are there right and what first message if you see all the three are going down all the messages and first are going down okay no one win no one lose okay uh, and second one you see uh, second message have a recessive edge not the dominant edge and third message is also having a recessive edge but not the dominant edge so two three having the dominant edges 
but first message have the recessive edge uh, first message will be having the recessive edge right so the similar way so who is exactly losing here is nothing but your one is getting lose here and uh, while going to the next one okay let us see two three are now quite a similar one okay left one one leave it because it lost so it is a lost priority to me and two three are having the same message structure right same plots okay fine next go to the next sector so okay both are having a resources okay fine the very next sector if you see third one is holding a recesso right upper one going up is nothing but a recesso uh, so third one is having the recesso but second one is having the dominant edge it went to down right so that's the reason second message won the arbitration and second message will be received i mean processed first by the acu thereafter third thereafter first so 2 3 1 is the order so this is how the arbitration is being implemented in the can so if if multiple messages are received they have to see according to this algorithm and according to them only it will just process the messages okay we talked about the messages how multiple messages are received and how it is getting processed and we're going to the different types of uh, frames frames are nothing but messages so nothing but like there are different four types of frames a data frame is nothing but consists only data and uh, remote frames are nothing but so you are just sending the data to transmitter right to receiver side whatever you requested it has to go through the remote frame uh, and an error frame error frame is nothing but okay your no nac acknowledgement i told right you have to send an acknowledgement whether it is a positive or negative so if it uh, in can also we have an algorithm called as like a passive error and active error so while it went reaches 655 error count the bus has to stop the communication so it will never allow you to send any messages in the bus if it reaches a 255 error count so that is like error frames talks about overload frame if it is over overflow overloading the frames like overloading the messages um, let us say there is an extra delay between the sending and uh, in the data and remote friends that's where this uh, overload frame also comes into the picture now there are four types of can friends overall so this is how the introduction about can okay going to the next topic diagnostics and vehicle and standards uh, okay at the right side you will be able to see some kind of your serial numbers with respect to uds services what is uds unit services i mentioned at the starting at the beginning uh, that okay you have a number of components in your in your car and uh, you who knows that which component exactly failed you never know okay these services will be helpful and we, this diagnostics will be helpful that okay this problem okay your air filter is causing the issues okay your brakes are failing because it's actually not working properly like uh, it's rotten or it's a short circuit battery or anything is happening anything re with respect to electrical side or anything with respect to uh, wires are not proper anything so everything you will be getting know getting to know about this uds service so if uh, what is the services so why exactly are called as services so you cannot just read the services uh, you cannot just read the diagnostics by just connecting some kind of equipment so you need to send some commands and receive the messages and process the messages to know the information so to uh, send the commands there is some restrictions there are different commands right okay i need to read the information only or i need to reset the particular equipment to zero percentage or to higher percentage so let us say 100% is i need to set so different components you can able to control using this uds services so these are all main important services i try to list it down here so every service will be having a service identifier you can able to see diagnostic session control 10 is your reset 11 security access 27 test present 3 and etc 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 so these are all the different services available um so as i mentioned using services only you can able to fire some commands to your ecu and you can able to receive the messages back to your component 
ஆட்டோமோட்டிவ்ஸ் like a society for automotive engineers called as sae and uh, plenty others like uh, in pune we have actually one and uh, plenty of others are there and this is also one kind of a standards which it will be providing so every vehicle must follow these standards to implement this can architecture okay and uh, physical layer talks about the electrical voltage things data link layer about the communication network layer again about the communication but not about the data and uds has come talks about the diagnostics alone not about the communication so, but people call it as a, one is on board diagnostics and another is off board diagnostics so basically you only then you will be able to see in the trucks not in the cars and hind cars mm, there are two addressing mechanisms two physical addressing and functional addressing uh, so to talk about this addressing mechanism let us say you have a one particular message which is relevant to only one particular issue not to the multiple issues let us say i have five different nodes are connected five different issues connected in my same network okay one is trying to transmit to 2 3 4 5 5 okay but one wants to transmit only to 5 but not to 2 3 4 right so in that case physical addressing it can use okay it can actually utilize only fifth address but not the 2 3 4 address only fifth address alone it can use and it can transmit the messages so one to one communication i was talking about so it's a physical addressing i can talk about okay let us say as you may call you might be calling some person it's a one to one communication only not the conference call okay if it is comes comes under the conference call it's a functional addressing or a radio is the best example for the functional addressing one will be sending the messages and uh, everybody else will be receiving the messages so will be it should be a functional addressing basically so these are the two addressing mechanisms are there in the can okay i was talking about positive and negative acknowledgement right i will give a small intro about it okay hey varun he- am i audible yes 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 varun uh, so sorry for interruption uh, actually uh, we are like going beyond the time can we just speed up a little bit and have some uh, time for q and a session and and uh, close this session as soon sure, as possible sure, sure. yes yeah. yes sure. okay sure. thank you varun yeah thank you uh, so these are positive response and negative response and uh, response suppressed okay i was talking about so this remote uh, laptop is there right this is the your equipment and you are sending commands to your car and car is responding back it's responding by a positive or negative anything or it cannot send any response in case it's faulty so these are all the different types of diagnostics over there can and uh, okay i was talking about the errors right different stuff errors this right side table blue color which talks about the different types of errors which can occur when you are firing the command so plenty of errors are there there is a different classification which was there in uh, uds and uh, yeah how exactly you are going to fire the services commands or you are connecting your laptop towards the car how this using this obd2 connector so to every other car connector you are able to see here this under the uh, car um, steering you can able to see this column nothing but this obd connector and uh, to this connector you will be able to connect with the bottom device the l1 or orange one and uh, so to request the diagnostics and you can read any information with this device and the other one which is right side to that uh, one which is looking like a mobile phone and the next one is like a wireless wifi it's like a zigbee protocol it just connects and you can receive the data in the through wifi to your laptop or anywhere or you can just record the things in this uh, thing and you can actually play it after some time so these are all like diagnostics through can in the car this is the connector which it looks like it's a 16 bit bit connector and error memory management i was talking about different errors right how exactly the errors are classified so here you can able to see the right side diagram 
P zero three zero two, right? So P says a power train. Power train includes your engine and your transmission, your uh, transmission side, everything. Your is the power train. So if it is a P, it is a engine trouble or transmission trouble or a, an exhaust system trouble. So if it is a chassis, chassis component. If it is a C at the starting, it's a chassis trouble. If it is a B at starting, it's a body trouble. If it is a door is not fitting well, uh, it's a body trouble error code. Okay, and the second L one talks about the standardization. Like okay? it's a manufacturing specific code or it's a standard code. It talks about zero or one. If it is a one for manufacturer. And three is something about the which subsystem you are talking about. Okay, what kind of a subsystem is faulty here now? So that talks about this. So it's all predetermined according to the code. You can be able to go through the manual and see it how which subsystem exactly getting affected by the code. Okay, uh, so this is the code which will be responded from that OBD2 connector, and uh, you can actually know okay this component got failed. So this is how the error memory management comes. Evolved diagnostics. I spoke a lot about it. I was telling this OBD2 connector, right? It's connected to your laptop or any way, by any means you can connect, and you can just fire the services and read the services. You can know the faults. You can calibrate the engine to the best economy and everything. Like uh, you can see the calibrations. You can configure the part numbers. You can calibrate the diagnostics to a different way. Uh, everything you can do. Uh, so this is how the connection looks like. Uh, Evil diagnostics. I already given very good example at the beginning uh, about the Evil diagnostics. And uh, okay, which are all the tools used uh, to communicate over car and your uh, laptop is nothing but this can be so plenty of other tools like Canon, Analyzer, Monaco. So there are like uh, some other tools in the industry which are there. Okay, these are all different tools. These are all like a softwares. If we mainly uh, from the industry, people are looking with this Canon skill and Canalizer skill, and can pay very lightly. Uh, so basically, Canon is the major skill people are looking in the automotive sector. Ninety percent people will, ninety nine percent will be knowing about Can in automotive field who are working. Okay, evolution in the automotive field. I talked about the engines. Okay, started with the external combustion engines in the trains after the internal combustions like a bike car and all and uh, coming to the very next slide the very next generation is like a hybrid generation mix of two fuels and uh, the very next generation is electric which is yet to come so this is how the engines are getting transformed and we are now in the century where electric is the future by 2030 Everything will be going to be electric in the developed areas, not in the India, but developed areas. Everything will be going to be electric. So the existing vehicles they will not be selling, but the ones they will be selling will be the electric only. And um, yeah, they should follow the Euro regulations for the conventional engines. I just tried to mention here. I also mentioned the career path and job opportunities. Yes. There are three different types. Uh, initially, I talked about two only, right? Like a product supplier and OEM. So service based are like a uh, some companies are there like a LNT and Tata, TCS. Also, plenty of other supply service based companies are there. What they will be doing? They will be hiring people and they will be sending to either suppliers or either to the OEMs. OEMs are nothing but the whole world messages everywhere. So this is how uh, the chain in the automotive market. So product based companies and OEMs are much better companies compared to service based. But from service based, they will be on siting to the OEMs, and you will be working under OEM or a supplier. So at least I try to mention some companies which are located in Bangalore here, like a Mercedes and Hyundai, Mahindra, Tata Motors, JWM, Ola Electric. There are these companies are OEMs uh, comes under in Bangalore, and uh, there are plenty of tier one companies. But I try to mention some four or five of them: Active, Autoliv, Bosch, Continental, Tata, Alexa, Harman, etc. So all these companies are like a tier one suppliers, and uh, um, everything comes into the the hiring uh, philosophies: electronics and electricals only. Uh, mechanical is a uh, quite a less uh, quite a less maybe some ten percent odd. Um, but ninety percent mostly electronics and electricals will be there. 
and the primary skills which they are looking are like a cam ethernet uds diagnostics hill testing d space etas so basically cam and cam are the quite very quite important if you want to get in into this uh, domain uh, the other stuff or related to the work and run it and python coding is a very much uh, good if you have it and uh, jenkins also is a highly appreciable skill which uh, companies are looking at